Hang on to all valuables. If anything falls over this truck, I cannot afford to go back and get it. So make sure you hang on to it tightly. Make sure all little ones stay fully seated, including babies. Make sure everyone's seated in your laps. With that, let's go ahead and put. He's the biggest animal here in the Aturi Forest, but one of the smaller types of rhinos here in Africa. Again, they'll hang out by themselves because they can be really territorial. This goes for both males and for females. On the right hand side, it looks like you're going to be on a couple of those bongos. They're actually both the right and left hand side, so wherever you got some cameras, have them out. They're on both sides here. Beautiful creatures. Now, bongos are the ones with horns for both male and for females. The greater kudu here does not have horns because that was only a big girl. Males have horns are about six feet long. Looks like we're going to be heading to the savannah. 
It's going to be a place that can go through several droughts in just one year. When that happens, the animals can find it kind of hard to find their water and food. Now that's of course unless they know where to find it. Look on the right hand side real quick. That's going to be a bob up tree. So this tree, it may not look like too much at first, but this tree can conserve up to 1,000 gallons of water inside its trunk by going leafless for nine months out of the year. They get to be about 3,000 years old, so they're incredibly durable and incredibly hardy. The animals will always rely on them. because one of the ways they choose to play together is by rolling around in someone else's belt. And so he later calls sweet on the left hand side. Seeing a few of those wildebeest, but also if you look over your left hand shoulder, the red antelopes there are going to be stable antelopes. Stable antelopes are led by a dominant male, but the dominant female controls the movement of the group. So essentially she's going to tell him to tell everyone else to get together. And for he later called Pala Pala. All right, friends, hands up for yes, hands down for no. These zebras up ahead, are they black horses with white stripes? <laughs> uh, are they white horses with black stripes? So technically they're gonna be both, but look at their snouts. These have black and brown snouts, indicating that they are black horses with white stripes. If they are gonna have white, pink, or gray snouts, it makes them the exact opposite. All right, this one right here, she's pretty calm. Also, notice that they have a flap of skin under their neck. It may be hard to see this one on the right unless she turns her head, but that's going to be called a dewlap. It's going to store water so they can go a couple days without drinking any water. And for healing, whether it's a black horse with white stripes or white horse with black stripes, they can both be called Punta Malia. as much as four feet in just one year. That beside them will be a, a two-year-old male as well. So they are going to be very, very tall. Now as they are Maasai giraffes, they're named after a Swahili-speaking tribe called the Maasai tribe. So instead of calling the animals giraffes, the Maasai tribe would call them Twiga. T-W-I-G-A, Twiga. It's Swahili word for giraffe. Now on the right, we'll be seeing two different animals with two different size horns. So towards the palm trees, you'll see the Antoli cattle. They have horns that are about five to six feet long and so those horns are blood vessels keeping the animals cool. Now the spring buck can actually leap five to six feet into the air from the same position and run 55 to 60 miles an hour. They're tiny but they are mighty. Um, can anyone look at them and tell me what they have in common with the cheetahs? Can anyone guess what that is? So it's actually the black lines going from their eyes to their mouth. Those are called malar marks. It's going to help reflect the sun from their eyes so they can see where they're going. So kind of like the natural pair of sunglasses. On the left hand side, two beautiful giraffes. Looks like they're hanging out in the shade. Speaking of keeping cool, coming on up, someone's down by the water and going up ahead. They'll do not one, but two African elephants. 
years old. If you look at the way she's uh what she's doing with her back legs, she's uh crossing them because she learned how to do it from her mom. That's her mom's habit as she's doing just now. Whenever they were relaxed, they'll just copy the matriarch. Very, very cute here. Now the baby elephant has taught me quite a few things in the time I've been working here. Uh, but one of the most important things she's taught me is that elephants can throw tantrums. Uh, some of the things that maybe she will let them know. Uh, of course, if you guys ever need a boost of serotonin, I do recommend looking up a baby elephant tantrum. It will never not be funny. Now, we're going to keep on going here for a very good look. If anyone else hanging out in the area, but I will say, to help protect the elephants, again, just be careful what it is you're buying. Make sure it's eco-friendly, cruelty-free, and especially ivory-free as well. On the left, we have the greater flamingo, but here's a couple of baby ducks. Now, while the baby ducks were not exactly part of the plan here, I will say they do uh, show an important lesson when it comes to the baby flamingos or the yeah, adult flamingos. Sometimes the adult flamingos will actually feed the baby ducks just to practice feeding their own babies. Now, in Swahili, the word for flamingo is the word hero. So if you guys want to, look at the shape of the island. You might just see one of our heroes. Who can guess the shape of the island? It's a Mickey. Two small circles at the top, one big circle at the bottom. That's my boss. <laughs> I think it's nice to close here looking on uh, the right hand side and the left hand side. It's hanging out very close to it. There is an animal I really want to see today. It'll be the white rhinos. Now the white rhinos are a lot bigger than the black rhinos. If you guys remember from earlier, he weighed about 3,000 pounds, but the white rhinos can weigh as much as 7,000 pounds, although usually they hang out at around 5,000 pounds. 
and they can run 35 miles an hour towards the loudest sound, which they often do when they're nervous. So instead of running away from large or loud noises, uh, they run straight towards it. That's why their group is going to be called a crash, because they can't see more than 10 feet from their faces, but they run towards things they can't see at a very high speed. Now, we see them. Keep in mind the white rhinos are free roaming creatures. Make sure we're not whistling to them as we see them. Uh, this truck only goes eight miles an hour. And again, they run 35. shoulder if you guys see the tree that has a tail it's going to be a cheetah uh, actually two cheetahs hanging out under one tree so you can see it to the back there they're laying on down hopefully they'll switch or move or something like that so you can see them a bit better but cheetahs are going to be the world's fastest land mammal going from zero to 70 miles an hour in just under 10 seconds they can hold up speed for 30 seconds to a minute and cross two football fields in just one minute they can't roar but instead they're going to be out like a giant house cat on the left here's one that's a little bit more prominent here in the sunlight She's fighting off that sleep that she'll uh, give it in just a moment. Now, although they are in the big cat family, again, they can't really roar. Instead, they meow like a giant house cat. And although we can't see their faces very easily, they're pretty well known for their mallow marks. All right, coming on up, let's see if we can have a chance of seeing the lions on the left-hand side or any other really cool features. Now on the left hand side, these are Kopi rocks. That's usually where the lions will hang out all day long. They sleep during the day, they go hunting at night. See mostly the hunting with the males, they'll stay back and catch the prize. Now on the right hand side here, we're seeing a couple of creatures. We'll be seeing a female rhino on top of the hill. Can you guys see her? On the right hand side. Uh, if you see a little lump of um, rock behind her, that's not a rock, that's her baby. Her baby's eight months old. And right beside this is the rarest animal we'll see on the reserve. It's a bantabot. They're considered extinct in the wild due to the culture for their horns and fur. Sometimes, depending on what they're eating, their fur can reflect purple in the sunlight. Currently, he's not eating that substance, so he's not, uh, not reflect purple at this point in time. Now, to help protect animals, uh, if you like the bantabot, be careful what is you're buying. If you guys are buying fur textures, make sure you're not buying actual fur. Make sure it's going to be fake fur. going here. I'm not seeing any lions on the left hand side. It may be a bit too hot for them, but I can give you guys a Swahili word for a lion is the word Simba. That's the NBA Simba just means lion in Swahili. Bafa means king or leader and Rafiki means friend. So if you guys ever want to say hi friends, then mm -hmm. say John or Rafiki. Alright, looking at this empty area on the left hand side, we're going to keep on going to check all the ostriches. So they're hanging out under the uh, tree here. Now, I do want to tell you guys what they're doing because it looks like they're just hanging out here for now, but they're actually trying to play decoy. So we're going to keep easing up slowly. But if you guys look to the right-hand side, it's going to be a pile of eggs. So they want to get our attention so that we're not paying attention to those eggs. That's why they're watching us right now. That's why they're being so out into the open. They can hide really well, so if they did not want us to see them, we wouldn't be able to find them. But they want us to know that we're here, get our attention, so they won't pay attention to we won't pay attention to their eggs. These are both going to be females. Uh, look at their brown feathers and their bodies and their faces. That is what shows you that they are females. Look at those giant eyes, bigger than their brains. Their legs are very huge and powerful. That's why they can run 35 miles an hour when squatting, or 40 miles an hour when standing upright. Those wings were not big enough to carry them in flight, but it does help them to change the direction. Now, when it comes to the eggs we just saw, keep in mind that each egg can withstand the pressure of their parents. That's about 300 to 400 pounds of pressure per egg. I just get tired of the nest per egg. Now, let's keep on going here for a very good look. Anyone else who may be hanging out in the area? Now, this is technically the warden's area, so we're not going to see the biggest of creatures hanging out here. We may see a couple of very small ones. Actually, we will, we will be seeing the smallest animals in our reserve. They're called Nigerian goats. And of course, they welcome babies last year. So on the left hand side are Christmas miracles and their parents. Nigerian dwarf goats who love to headbutt each other for fun. They love eating because they have four stomachs. And you can use them as pets, livestock, or in a very traditional sense, a wedding present. Now, but that depends on the wedding. Alright, now these gates here, unfortunately, they do signify the end of the runway reserve, which also means